All right, yeah. welcome to Witch Police Radio. I'm here with someone who is, um, you haven't been on the show before, but I, I know you've been in a lot of projects kind of over the years, and we're going to talk about one in particular, but I think maybe the best way to kind of get this started is if you want to introduce yourself and maybe give a bit of background about what you've done musically. Um, I mean, obviously here in Winnipeg, uh, over the years, you don't have to name everything. I know you've had a, a few bands, but some of the high, high points, I guess. Yeah, um, uh, my name is Rob Rogers. Uh, I am currently in a band called Yelverton Undertow. Um, I uh, am from Newfoundland. I moved here in 2001 and joined Paper Moon. Right. Um, and then was in Paper Moon forever. And then September West after that. Uh, then I guess I'm still in a band called Yo Yodi. Um, and, but, you know, Yelverton Undertow is kind of my main recording project right now. Yeah. And Yelverton Undertow is what, what we're going to talk about for the most part yeah. uh, today too. But I, I guess like for background on that, on that album, my, my um, familiarity with that project is that it was recommended to me um, kind of randomly. I checked it out. I liked it. I ordered the tape and I, I take it. I was one of the few people who did, which is great. I'm happy yeah. to be yeah, <laughs> happy to support, but the, the project has, has kind of a um, cross country vibe to it in that it, it's two of you and you're not both in the same city. Right. So what's the, what's the origin uh, of Yelver Turner? Uh, so in Newfoundland, I was in a band with a guy called Matt Thompson uh, called racing, racing turtles. Um, and there was me and Matt and Justin, um, Justin Avery. And then after I left, uh, Matt and Justin kept going. Um, I moved here to Winnipeg uh, in 2001. Yeah. Um, Matt kept going. He was in Montreal for a bit with other bands. And then uh, we would, you know, meet up when I was touring through with Paper Moon. Um, and then... Uh, we didn't really play together. We kept we kept talking about maybe playing together. He had done a thing. Have you heard of the RPM challenge? Yes, it sounds familiar. Yeah, it's a once uh, once a year in February. Um, it's kind of just make whatever music you want in the month of February. Right. You know, you can write it and uh, record it and do everything uh, just in that month. He had done it with his band at the time. They were called. Uh, open fields um and then you know he was like, like maybe you know we could do something together online um i ended up doing one by myself uh i say by myself but i had a bunch of friends come in on it um and then uh when the pandemic hit uh we were both home he works in film and television and sound um so he was home like proper. He had nothing. Yeah. To do. Uh, so that's when he was like, you know, let's actually do this. Um, and I was working from home, so I had a lot more time. Um, and so we did the first album in that February of 2020. Um, and then, you know, he had some other stuff to do with other projects. And then we got back together. I think again in February, but we, we decided we weren't going to try to do the challenge. The The RPM challenge is really hard uh, Yeah, when you have to, I think it's at the time it was 10 songs or 30 minutes or something like that. Uh, that's a lot for a month for, for any kind of music. Like any, any, yeah. that's, it's a big, a big ask, I think. Yeah. And when you're trying to do it, you know, true, it means you're writing 10 songs worth of lyrics and everything from scratch. Yeah. And, gets a bit exhausting uh the first one i did by myself i like didn't sleep for that month i just spent the entire month in the basement recording and organizing drumming and organizing you know other guitarists and uh yeah it really eats away at you if if you if you're not expecting it i um, believe it yeah yeah <laughs> so this time we we tried to do it um just for fun this time I guess, um, with no real goal. So we started recording back in February and, uh, now it's almost a year later. Uh, we're finally getting it out. How, how long had it been, had it been since you had actually played together, um, before the first one? Like, I mean, I know you said you, every time Paper Moon would stop through, you, you would, you would get together, but how long had it actually been since you'd actively been in a band a couple decades or so? 
It was, yeah, it was 20 years. So I left in, yeah, 20 or 2001, I left Gander and uh, moved here. And yeah, we hadn't, we hadn't actually done anything until that first one in 2020. Well, uh, and the reason I ask that is because that's a long time. That's a long time to be apart. Obviously, you stayed in touch and things like that. But I mean, people's tastes change, especially over a time period of that long. Did you find that you still had things in common musically as far as kind of what you wanted to do and where you were going with the project? Yeah, no, it was immediate. Um, we both, I guess, still kind of listened to the same bands. A lot of, uh, you know, um, he's into he's into a lot more, um, you know, obscure bands than I am. Uh, but we both really love like Eric's Trip, um, okay. you know, S Sonic Youth, uh, uh, Pavement, all like that sort of stuff. It, it, that's, you know, I think we're at an age where we're not, you know, getting new favorite bands of all time every month. Yeah, they're solidified, right? The ones that you, yeah. you're going to be yeah, they're stuck with you for life now. Yeah, the ones you had when you were a teenager or now you're just, you know, totally. you love them. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's I think somebody said like, oh, so you just made a new Racing Turtles album. with, <laughs> And it is it's it's mostly the same thing. It's just, I guess, a little more polished now. What? Uh, 19. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess you you presumably both got better <laughs> at making yeah, music well, all that time. He One did. would hope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I stayed about the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, was it, I? You know, I had a question for you, and I just lost it there. But I was going to ask you. Um, obviously, you know, doing this during the pandemic, and this is a question that I, I'm I'm really sick of asking. But it's the pandemic has been such an impact on especially creative people, right? Yeah. Most people I've talked to who have released music or recorded music during this time, it's completely changed sort of their uh, approach to to releasing music, to to getting it out there. But you're in a different position because this is not necessarily something that that is easy to say play shows or you know do a release yeah. party or things like that. So so none of that is even on the table, um, at least at the moment, right? So what was right. what was that like, sort of releasing music in this in this weird time when nobody knows what the hell is going on, and then also having this kind of bonus of well, it doesn't have to be released the the, the normal way. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of freeing. Like it was it kind of finally made sense for us to record online together. Uh, you know, before it would have been more of a gimmick. Um, right, right. Then the pandemic hit and it was the only way you could do it. And so we were just one of hundreds, thousands of bands that became, you know, pandemic bands. Yeah. Is is yeah. the process different though? I mean, as far as, I, it's obviously different, but mm -hmm. as far as recording, making music together, having this this distance between you and having a computer sort of as a, as an intermediary had you done anything like that before not really no um so in paper moon it was very much like we would record every third or we would practice every thursday every sunday okay um and then we would go into a studio like an actual studio um with producers and everything um but then you know i guess the big difference is uh, we don't have band practices, so we don't get uh, the songs aren't really super solidified as Matt and me songs. Okay, um, they're kind of uh, they're more. I guess you know how Sloan is. They have like Chris songs and yeah, Jay yeah. songs, and it's more like that. Um, like there's definitely, I think, if you knew Matt's music uh, and you knew my music you might be able to tell this is a Rob song. This is a Matt song. Um, and, but I think it also helped us, um, you know, kind of not care so much like Matt will send me a track and the guitar part is completely different than what I expected. And it's like, well, that's how it is. Like that's, he liked it. He recorded it. And if I don't, you know, completely hate it, uh, it's a great track. It's done, you know. So you give each other a fair amount of uh, latitude to sort of do what you want on the track. Yeah. it sounds like. Uh, he definitely gives me like, because uh, he is a pro. Like this is what he went to school for. He knows theory. Uh, he knows all the like how to make a good song. Yeah, where I'm just making noise most of the time. Um. So yeah, it's uh, 
it's good though. I think it's, it works out well for us because uh, we can just kind of make songs that we want to make. Uh, well, it's interesting what you just said too, about having the, the one half of the project be having the theory background and all of that sort of technical side of things. And then you're just making noise. I find yeah. that a lot of bands, it almost works out better when you have that, the two extremes, rather than right. everyone. I mean, because if you have everyone just making noise, it can be too chaotic. And, exactly, yeah. But then if you have everyone who's too technical and then too, they know too much, it, it can almost suffer from that as well. I think it's it's a right. good combo, having having yeah. the, the, the chaos and the, the sort of structure. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll send him a, I'll send him a demo track and he'll come back and say like, oh, this needs an E7 sustained removed or whatever. And I'm like... I don't know what that is. You're going to have to send me a picture and he'll send me a picture like of oh, his yeah. hand like this. And he's like, play this. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And uh, there's no, you know, I'm not like, ah, I don't know. It should be a G nine sustained. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't care. I just, <laughs> he's the expert. So I just kind of do what he says. Um, just, just follow the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it works out well for us. Um, yeah. We both have the same tastes. So we're both kind of trying to write the same songs. Has that has that changed now that you have this this, this second album that's uh, that's coming out? Has that has the process changed at all? Have you have you are you sort of is it easier? Does it flow better? Is this whole remote thing more comfortable uh, for you to write together? Yeah, for sure. Um, the first one, uh, I had a really hard time with it, like just concentration wise. Um, you know, he would he's at home, not working. Yeah, uh, through the pen, the first part of the pandemic there. So he he's like sending me things. He's mixing things so fast and sending them back. And then I'm like, I get an hour a night. You know, I don't I don't get to do that. Uh, this time it was a lot more. Yeah, like I was less panicked about it. I could just uh, go to the basement and I knew kind of what he was looking for in sound because like he's really also he cares about things like mics, right? Mic placement where I, I just had like garbage mics. I got like yard sales. Um, now I have nice mics, um, <laughs> but I know how he, you know, I kind of know how he wants them set up and uh, I know, uh, you know, the file types he wants and uh, that sort of stuff. So he's, yeah. Yeah. we got kind of a better system down now. Do you, do you foresee this as being kind of an ongoing project like i mean after this one comes out are, are you going to be doing more is is it like is it comfortable to to just do these when when you have the time to when you want to sort of thing yeah yeah i think so um i don't i don't see us having a reason to really stop doing it um it could just be a thing that we do you know in between doing other stuff um i know we've even traded back and forth some voice memos so okay. we already have parts of the songs written uh for the next whatever we do cool um, we're also doing that uh have you heard yeah you've heard that uh transistor light and sound cover yes yeah the one it? that uh that, that, that nick friesen's putting out yeah. Friesen, yeah yeah so we're gonna do a song on there um and i don't think it'll take us you know nearly as long as if as if we had tried to do this in 2020 right just because you're the experience of, of having gone through it yeah, and I kind of know that like he's gonna play this guitar part. I'm gonna play this guitar part. He'll do drums more than likely. I'll do bass. Um, yeah, we'll trade off vocals. Like that's just how we do now. That's cool. Yeah, it's interesting that um, like you, even though the pandemic is it's not over, it's it's things have changed a bit. Like you know, shows are happening. Hopefully, it kind of mm -hmm. continues to improve. I mean, who knows? Next week we could be back in a lockdown, but uh, right now it seems like like things are happening. You know, people are are getting out there. Music is live. Music is happening. Uh, again, you're in this position where you're in different parts of the country. Is this mm -hmm. ever something that you hope to do in a live setting, or is it strictly going to be a recording project? I think it would be cool. So, we did play a show. I went down there last. Oh, cool. No, I think it was two, three years ago. Now I went down. I went back to Newfoundland for my brother's wedding. And they heard I was coming and they were okay. like, we're playing a show. We're playing a racing turtle show, our first show in, you know, 18 years or whatever. And uh, it was good. It was really fun. And it just clicked. Um, I think Matt and I, even if we even just got the rest of the guys from racing turtles, we could just, you know, send them the album. Yeah. Here, learn these songs. 
let's go play some Yelverton Undertow shows. Uh, we could. Um, I don't think it's it's not something we're planning to do. I don't think ever. Um, but it's totally a possibility. If I ever end up in Newfoundland for some reason with nothing to do. Right. You have you you got an option there. <laughs> like yeah. shows. Yeah. 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 No, that, that that's that's cool. And then the I guess the other question of that too is, I mean, the way that obviously, you know, you've been in bands long enough, the way that music is not only consumed, but the way it's put out there and the way it's kind of uh promoted and all of that, it's all totally different than it was even even 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. And how do you, especially with a project like this, where you're not playing shows, where it is this kind of nebulous thing, where these these two guys from different parts of Canada, how do you get it heard in a in a world where everyone and their dog is releasing twenty albums an hour from their basement? You know, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's 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 such a tricky thing in the first place. But I mean, with something like this, how how do you get it out there? How do you get people to hear what you're doing? I honestly have no idea. Um, <laughs> we are, I think, for us the that's kind of where you know we're not trying to make play shows we're not even trying to sell records like we've yeah. always put our stuff as pay what you want um it's really about recording with friends from high school and uh hopefully people listen to it um we're not good at, i don't think we're good at the marketing part yeah uh, so like even with the tapes i we made 50 of those or something we sold four and i ended up just giving the rest away leaving them on the street brought some to a record store and just like can you just take them i don't ever want to see any money from them just give them away to somebody if they seem interested in a cassette yeah. tape uh that sort of thing so yeah it's not uh i'm not sure i have no idea how to get people to listen to it now um, does does that well, does that matter at this point with this band though? I mean, is that that this sounds like it's not the goal, right? The goal is just for you two to reconnect and and create together. Yeah, it would be really nice if more <laughs> people heard it. I, like, I don't need people to buy the album, but if like our band camp or our Spotify plays went up, that's I think that's the like super main goal. But it's not a that's more of a dream, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people will hear it. The main goal is to just record it and do it. Um, for the last one, we decided we wanted to be on cassette tape. This one, the whole thing was recorded with the goal of putting it on vinyl. Like that was kind of the, let's just record something because neither of us have ever been on vinyl. Yeah. Let's, let's make something that, uh, you know, it's worth putting on on vinyl. Um, so that that was kind of the the purpose of recording this album is that still the goal are you still hoping to to release it on vinyl yeah we so we made vinyl okay they, cool cool they look here i got they're beautiful oh wow nice. so it's kind of like yay you know we we did it we're done but uh <laughs> they cut them wrong they're they're completely unlistenable um <laughs> so so this right here is like a cost $120 each for one of these. Wow. Um, and they're they're pointless. They're useless. Like it doesn't but, you can't hear anything? Uh you can hear everything past the first 30 seconds. So anybody who bought this in a store would put it on and yeah. they're not going to wait 30 seconds for the crazy loud static to stop. Um so, so what do you do with that then if you have a box of records like how do you Well, we got 12 of them. Okay. Uh, it's it's a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of them's gonna go on my wall. Nice. Uh, Matt's probably gonna put one on his wall. I might send one to my mom. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> where I we're looking at getting them recut, but that's like another huge pile of money for a band that purposefully doesn't make money. Yeah, uh, to spend. Well, maybe a, a question to jump off that is then where, where can people hear you? Because if people are listening to this and sort of being introduced to the band for the first time, what's the best way that, that you would encourage people to check it out? Uh, Bandcamp, uh, for sure. Um, both of uh, the albums are on there. And you can just go to yelvertonundertow.com if you can spell that. It's it's an impossible well, name. It'll be in the in the title of the episode, too. But yeah. <laughs> what does the name mean? Well, it's, it's a... It's a I mean, it's, as you say, it's an unusual kind of, uh, kind of a yeah. Name. So we we couldn't figure out a name. Um, we have this thing. Uh, so Matt's band when he was in Montreal was called Open Fields. Okay. 
And then I got this idea for a band name uh, called Lakes and Fields. And I felt weird about it because we hadn't really talked much. Uh, this was, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, so I messaged him and said, hey, is it okay if I call my band Lakes and Fields? And he said, that's an awesome name. Uh, we should always name our bands together. So his, so now I'm the solo RPM challenge I did was Lakes and Fields. Um, and now his band, his current band is uh, Land of the Lakes. Okay. And so the next band I create is going to have to have either Lakes or Fields in it. Um, and so the, the first album was called uh, the Lakes EP. And then this new one's the Fields EP. Right. Um, but where did it come from? We were trying to think of names and we couldn't, uh, we couldn't come up with anything. And then, you know, one of our, our all time favorite bands is Eric's trip and they got their name from a Sonic youth song. Right. So we were like, let's, let's steal some names from bands that we love. So we like made this huge list of, uh, good sounding song band names um from other bands uh and then i was as we were kind of spitting them out i was doing mock-ups of album covers um and so one of them was yelverton hill uh by the inbreds okay which is kind of one of my all-time favorites and uh the super friends have a song called undertow um and then we were going to call the album yelverton and or sorry the band yelverton and the album was going to be undertow okay but then we stick them together on the album cover like that we we're like what about yelverton undertow because nobody definitely nobody took that it's an impossible no, i thing. assume not no i ho hopefully not yeah. so it's it's easily googleable if you don't mind having to spell out yelverton undertow yeah um, so yeah I, we're the only ones around so that's really how it how it came about um, just trying trying to find a band name that wasn't taken that's awesome and that's, yeah. that's like, I mean, I, as someone with an incredibly stupid name for my podcast, I, I, can, I can, I can sympathize and relate. It's Google, yeah, need, but it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Yeah. You need that URL. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's all about, all about the, uh, the, the SEO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at this point, can people, you're saying people can get both records. Uh, are they both out now or is one of them still, uh, as of the date we're recording this to be released? Yeah. Future? So this one, uh, Fields EP, that's coming out January 31st. Okay. Um, so that'll be on all the Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you're using. Um, and then, but everything's on Bandcamp as well. Um, as well as the last one is also on Spotify um, or, you know, whatever streaming you're using. Cool. Um, and and yeah. as, as far as, I mean, obviously the records aren't happening at the moment because yeah. <laughs> it didn't work out. Uh, do you have any of those tapes left? Are you still selling tapes of the previous album? Or are they all, they're all been given away or? Uh, I think Matt has most of his. I know he drops some off at a record store uh, and they're still there. If you're in St. John's, go to Fred's music. Right on. Uh, there's uh, four there. I think he dropped off all four of them and they're still there. I've got a stack of five over there. Most of the others I left on a street or whatever. Um, and yeah, if if anybody wants them, yeah, just... I, I know you bought one and I sent you two. You did. That's and I just, actually passed yeah. one on to someone else who might be oh, interested. Thank in you. So, yeah. That's what you do, right? I mean, that's kind of the, the whole idea behind making, especially something like this where you're not playing shows. You're not going to have a merch table. Yeah. You're, it's just, uh, yeah, get it out there, right? Yeah. And I think it would even be like, if we made shirts, that would be a little much for us. Yeah. You know, we're, the fact that we even made tapes or vinyl is a little yeah. bit out there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's where, yeah, you'll hear us online, I guess. Awesome.